Today we're going to take a look at the custom tray workflow in the InLab Splint software. So when it comes to the InLab Splint software, of course, this is where you're going to be able to design either a Michigan splint uh, or an impression tray. So the very first step in the prepare phase is where you need to select the design type. And that's, of course, because you can design either uh, a splint or an impression tray. The software needs to know, OK, which one are we designing today? So I'm going to select create impression tray here. As soon as I do so, the next step on the sidewalk opens up here. So when we look at this step where it's the set model axis, if you had completed this in the CAD software prior to it downloading everything into the InLab Splint application, there's really nothing that you have to do here. But essentially what we're looking at is the midline and the occlusal plane. The next step here is prepare model. Much like an edit model in the CAD software, we've got the form tool available to us where we can add material, smooth material, or remove material from the model. So again, it's really just a last minute way for you to double check. Is there any changes that you need to make to this model prior to designing the tray? If there is nothing that you have to do with set model access and prepare model, the first step where you actually have to complete something now is define insertion access. So this is where on the lower left, we've got a legend that tells us the values in millimeters of those undercuts. So essentially what we're trying to do here is minimize them as much as possible. So the software kind of puts that pin at kind of a 90 degree angle imaginary uh, imagine kind of like an imaginary line from the tip of that arrow to the palette and then obviously forward to the anteriors. That would kind of be your 90 degree angle. So if we tilt this maybe at like an 80 to 75 degree uh, angle or some or so, we're, we're minimizing those undercuts further into the vestibule region. Now there's often going to be undercuts in that region, especially for upper uh, dentures. Um, but at this point, we're able to now uh, rely on the software to block out any of those undercuts uh, in the check block out stage. So now it's going to generate the block out for us and we're able to determine if we need to add more or remove any uh, of the undercuts as well too. So in the check block out stage, if you actually turn on the reline option, you're actually able to see those values of the undercuts underneath. Um, now with the reline option, you do have the ability uh, on the right hand side, there's the height in millimeters where you are able to set like a thicker block out. So if there was an area of concern that you were worried about for your custom tray where it might engage a little bit too much with an undercut or, or something like that, maybe a, a really bony ridge, you have the ability to uh, block that out with thicker undercut uh, using the controlled height tool uh, to be able to kind of draw your margin around that area. So it's definitely something you can achieve with the um, the reline option. Now with the form tool, you can add smooth or remove block out material, but you can also take it a step further by, um, uh, by identifying your max wax thickness to basically tell the software, okay, when we add block out, we don't want you going past 0 0.4 millimeters. So it'll add that safety so the software won't um, overdo how much block out it's actually placing for you. So that's kind of the nice added benefit of the block out. When we come into the design element, if this was an implant supported case, I could add implant channels uh, where I can determine the diameter of the channel and the height of the channel, uh, and then of course make it a closed or open tray. Um, but basically when we come into create impression, to define the borders, you've got either create by line or create by plane to define where you're gonna place the border. I personally like create by line better just because with a custom tray, obviously the purpose of it is to be custom to the patient's mouth. So I find with create by line, you have a lot more control over your initial border uh, for your tray itself. So I find that I, I tend to use create by line a little bit more, but it is up to the operator preference. Uh, once we have our border determined, we're going to want to set our thickness and our lift. So our thickness being how thick is the actual tray going to be, our lift meaning how much space are we giving for impression material. So the lift is essentially how much space is between the tray and the patient's ridge. Um, so that's an important uh, parameter to kind of be able to determine how much space you actually want to create for your custom tray. Now, if you don't apply the parameters on the right hand side, uh, once you actually select uh, the millimeters that you wish to proceed with, you'll have this really flat tray. So if ever you're kind of trying to place a handle and it doesn't look much like a tray, um, it's likely because you haven't hit apply to those parameters. Um, so at this point, I've changed my parameters here and I want to come below just to where it says apply to ensure that I apply those parameters to the tray. Because again, if you have a really flat paper thin looking tray, it is likely because you haven't applied uh, your parameters. Once you have that thickness and lift taken care of, you'll see that I kind of turn it so that you can see it here a little bit more, how much material thickness you're looking at and the lift. 
So then you have the ability to add a handle. So you can add a front or side handle, and then you're able to control the width, length, height, and L-shape offset of the handle. So the L-shape offset, meaning, you know, how much does that handle protrude out like the shape of an L? Um, so you have full control over that. Once you do place it, let's say you wanted to then move the handle, so you wanted to angle it a little bit differently. If you give it a click with your left cursor, it'll then highlight in green, and you'll have those arrows available to you to tilt the handle or physically move the handles as well. So if you needed to move it to the left or the right, you have full control. The next option here is create insertion stop. So that's a tissue stopper. So if you did need to place a couple tissue stoppers or, or one in particular, you just basically draw your margin by double clicking with your left, single clicks to kind of tag the line and, and help you curve it, and then a double click with your left to finish. So you're able to always add uh, those insertion access or insertion stops or the tissue stoppers. So then as I mentioned with the implant channels, you have the ability to control the diameter and the height of the channel and make it a closed or open tray. Uh, it always defaults to being an open tray, but you do have the ability to make it a closed tray. Once we're in the finalized stage, a couple things you can do. You can use the option to add holes where we're able to add, of course, our perforated holes for retentive pur uh, purposes. So when you hit add holes, you're basically able to highlight the areas where you wish to add those holes. And on the right hand side, you're going to notice that there's the diameter and distance uh, in millimeters. And so those are the parameters used for the holes themselves. So with the diameter obviously being the diameter of the hole and the distance basically being what is the distance between each of the holes on this tray. So as you highlight, you can obviously avoid things like the handle or the, the edge of the tray if you wish. And then once I have everything highlighted, you'll want to select apply. So once you hit apply, if there was a couple areas where you wanted to add just a couple additional holes, maybe in between some of them or, or maybe closer towards the border, you do have the option to add a single hole, Consider it almost like a hole punch where you're able to basically just uh, plug in holes to the actual tray itself. So now we have our retentive holes. And if we want to add a couple single holes, again, we can just basically double click with our left, which will apply holes to the areas that we're double clicking. So it's, we're always able to add more uh, if we determined that there was a couple more spaces that we wanted. So add text label. Of course, this comes in handy, especially if you're printing multiple trays at the same time, just to keep everyone's on track. So you can identify the name of either your patient or the office, whichever you prefer. Most would put their patient name. And then they'll basically give a double click to the handle. At that point, we're ready to export this as an STL. Uh, so you'll always want to save as type. You'll want to make sure that you just put STL. 